About a year ago, I told you about ArtSpace, an AI image generation platform that offers a lifetime deal, a one-time payment instead of a monthly or annual recurring subscription. ArtSpace has some updates. They still have a lifetime deal, but they've got a completely revamped tool section and some new models, so let's check it out. ArtSpace has two sections, the canvas, which we're looking at right now, or up here on this toggle, click that, and we go to the tools section. And the tools section has one-click tools for image generation and editing. We're gonna start in the canvas, so I'll come back up and flip the toggle. The big area in the center here is our canvas, and this white outline is the art box. This is where whatever you generate will show up. Down at the bottom is the prompt box. This is where you describe the image that you wanna generate. Up here in the upper right-hand corner is the model selection. If we click that drop down. Our two newest models here are Stellar Pro and Nova Ultra. They've also got something called Nova Flux and Nova Pro, and then under this legacy model drop down, they've got some older models. We'll stick with Stellar Pro. Then we've got a toggle here to boost visual vibrance. You can turn that off or on if you want enhanced colors and contrast. We've also got a smart content filter that is supposed to help block inappropriate content. You can add a negative prompt if there's things you specifically don't want in your image. You you can use a seed number if you're trying to generate an image similar to something you've already generated and you have the seed number. Or you can use a seed image, which is like a reference image. It won't produce exactly that image, but it'll take some influence from that seed or reference image. We're going to leave these seed things and the negative prompt blank. We'll go ahead and leave those toggles on for the visual vibrance and the content filter. Over here on your art box, right over the top, you have the aspect ratio, which is currently set to 1 to 1, 1024 by 1024. You can click that and select it. A different aspect ratio like 1920 by 1080 that's a 16 by 9 or 1080 by 1920 that'd be 9 by 16 and you also got some higher resolution presets over here or you can specify a custom size down at the bottom i'm not going to make any changes here we'll just stick with the one-to-one -one, 1024 by 1024 i already put a prompt in so we'll just come over here and click the go button once it's generated the image it drops it there on the canvas and then it moves the art box over to a blank spot if we clear out that prompt paste in a new one and maybe we want to switch models. So we come up to the top right, hit that drop down and go from Stellar Pro to Nova Ultra. We'll leave everything else the same and hit the go button. To move the canvas over so we can see this new image we just created, we can come up here and toggle on the move and then click anywhere and drag. Now we see the new image we just created and the art box moved over to the right. Now there's a lot more on this canvas than what you see here. I've already created some images, but if I come up here on the right and click zoom fit, then it'll show everything on the canvas. Canvas, the two images that we just created, our art box, and the images that I created earlier. If I put my mouse over top one of these images and just scroll in, it'll zoom in to where my mouse is. I can also, when I got this move toggle turned on, click and drag to move the canvas around. This image I created earlier, she's wearing a shirt that says Nova Ultra, and then the one next to it is wearing a shirt that says Stellar Pro. And I put these in two columns, so the images in the right column were created with Stellar Pro, and the ones on the left were created with Nova Ultra. Go ahead and zoom that in a little bit and move things over. Both of those images came out just fine. A little bit of a style difference, but both good images. Then below that, I created these two with the boost vibrant setting set to off. And by the way, I created this billboard image right here in ArtSpace as well. All the rest of these, like these two guys, those are both created with the boost vibrance turned on. The one on the left using the Nova Ultra model, the one on the right using Stellar Pro. I also generated this winter scene in a a forest clearing and we've got this car parked on a street and I also did a cartoon image here with some text. So if I want to zoom out and see everything come here and click this zoom fit. If I want to go back to my art box and make it front and center just click this zoom art box button. I'm just going to use my mouse wheel and zoom out a bit and over here I want to grab one of these snowy scenes. So let me turn the move toggle back off so I can select this image. We'll zoom in a bit here. The tools at the top of the image are clear. That would delete the image. Rotate clone to make a copy of the image. One click tools. That brings us into the tools section which we'll explore here in a minute but if we were to click any one of these tools it would go ahead and load in that image from the canvas. And then the last option is zoom image. I'm going to go ahead and clone this one, make a copy of it, toggle on the move, slide this over, got that front and center now. I'm going to click this eraser button. You can adjust the brush size, but I come down here in this little spot and I'm just going to erase part of this. Now I need to zoom out a little bit. Let's go ahead and fit everything. I want to grab my art box here. 
Well, first I need to deselect the eraser tool, then we'll grab the art box, bring it over this image. Now let's zoom back into our art box. I'm gonna say deer standing in the snow, and the idea is I want them in that spot right there that I just erased. We'll click the go button, and it dropped a little deer in the snow. When you have the art box over an image or overlapping an image that's on your canvas, you'll see that it says fill up top here. So that's gonna fill in part of an existing image, whether it's something in painting, like adding this deer to the image, or if we wanted to extend the image maybe make it a little bit wider. We can do that by just making sure it's overlapping some of the existing image, maybe about there. Give it a prompt to let it know what we want to happen over here in this area we're extending to and hit the go button. And then expanded the original image. Now I'm not too crazy about what it created here. I can sort of see the line where the extension happened and the sizing was a little off because my original image was a bit taller than this 1024 by 1024 box that I just used to outpaint. So in that case, I'd use my favorite button in any software, which is the undo button. You've also got a redo button up there. Next to that is your history. And when you go into the history, what you've got is just a thumbnail of the images you've created along with the settings, like the model, the prompt, the dimensions, and the seed. You can't download from your history. It's not like an image library. And we click this recover button. It doesn't necessarily bring back your whole full size image. What it does is put the prompt you use to generate that image and these settings over here back in so that you can hit the go button and generate a new image using all those same settings. And here this one turned out looking like our original. I'm not sure I want to rely on that so I prefer to download things if I want to keep them. And to do that just select an image and then up here at the top click the download button. It'll give you the option to download whichever image you selected, download all the images as a collage, or download all the images individually in a zip file. To get rid of an image off your canvas just click on it and then click this clear button. It'll ask you if you want to clear just that item or clear the entire canvas. We'll just get rid of that item. You've also got a clear button up here at the top that does the same thing. Clear the selected item or the entire canvas. Another tool we have up top here is formulas. That's under the light bulb. And it says formula builder. It's really a prompt builder. We'll click the inspire button. It'll sort of fill in a bunch of random stuff here. So it takes the subject, whatever you type in there. We can even change that. We'll say dog. And down in the generated prompt, you see it changed that to dog. And then you got these drop downs where you can pick all the details for each of these individual individual elements and it'll assemble whatever you've picked from all these lists into one prompt at the bottom and if you say apply formula it drops that prompt into the prompt box for you. I think that covers everything on the canvas except there was something about the eraser I did not show you so let me go ahead and move our art box over this image down here. I'll go ahead and click the zoom art box so we can get that nice and big. If I have the eraser turned on and I'm over here erasing something and I get carried away and do a little bit too much, I've got an option here for restore content. If I click that little checkbox, now it turns my eraser into a putter backer. So as I wipe back over things, it'll restore them and not be part of the erased part that we're trying to fill in. When I'm finished with the eraser tool, I do need to come click it to toggle it off. Now I think we've covered everything on the canvas. Let's go ahead and toggle over and check out the tools section. To create a new image on the tools page, we come right here to new image. Creating an image in the new image tool is super simple. Just give it a prompt and tell it what size you want your image to be. No model to select, no other settings to fiddle with. It gives us a sample prompt here. That's not what I want to do, so I'm going to get rid of that. I pasted in a prompt for a photograph of a woman in her late 20s at an outdoor cafe on a cloudy afternoon. The default size is a 1024 by 1024 square image. We can also get that square aspect ratio, but at a higher resolution by selecting the max at 4096, 4096. Some other common presets are available here. If you want something different different than any of these presets, you can go to the custom tab and specify your own dimensions. I'm going to come back to preset and select the full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Then click create. The image pops up over here on the right. If we hover, we get the option to view. That would be a larger preview of that image. Or we can download the image or share it in the public gallery. Now the images we generate are not stored in a library that we can access later. So it's really important if we want this image or think we might want it to go ahead and download it before we start doing anything else. Now that I've downloaded that image, let's come back up here in the prompt box, give it something entirely different. I'll leave the aspect ratio the same and create. This time I did a drone photo. It actually included the drone in the image and that's not what I wanted, but that does happen with a lot of the AI image generation models. So I'm gonna come up here and tweak the prompt instead of drone photo, 
I'm just gonna say aerial photo, hit create again, and now we have a drone photo sans drone. And again, if I wanna keep this image, I need to go ahead and download it, so we'll do that. Up here at the top, if you see this copy link button, that's not a link to this image, that's a link to the new image tool. So if you wanted to save that as a bookmark, so you just click and come straight into the create new image tool, that's what you would use that for. We'll go ahead and close out of here. So that was the new image tool for creating an image from a text prompt. Up here at the top is also a face swap tool and an upscale image tool. In total, I think they have something like 72 different tools on this page, so we're not gonna get into all of them, but we will check out a few more. Let's go back up to the top. Let's try the change scene tool. I'll just drag and drop the image that we just created of the woman at the outdoor cafe. It gives you some fun presets down here, ideas that you might wanna change the background to, like a pop star stage performance, professional magazine cover, Superman city battle scene, or you can click the custom tab and then type in the scene however you want it to be, like rainy street at night, cinematic lighting. So for her, let's try sitting on a park bench on a sunny afternoon. Click change scene, and there change the scene to a park bench on a sunny afternoon. Again, if we wanna keep this image, we need to come up and click the download button. We'll close out of there. Let's try the change expression tool. This time, let's use a different subject. I'll drag and drop this image. Like the other tools, the expression changer gives us some presets that we can pick from, like deep contemplation, enthusiastic excitement, or we can go over to the custom tab and describe the expression that we want. This time, let's use a preset. Let's try puzzled confusion. Then click change expression. She's puzzled and confused but her forehead is not looking so hot there. I think we overdid it on the wrinkles. Let's try a genuine happy smile. We didn't get a wrinkled up forehead this time. That's good. I'm not crazy about how it handled her chin and the lines around her mouth, but it's definitely not as bad as what that last one did to her forehead. We'll close out of this tool. Let's try the change pose. This time I'm going to drop in an image of me. Again, we've got some presets that we can pick from, or we can go over to the custom tab and describe a pose. Let's go back to the presets here. Yeah, let's try thoughtful content contemplation. Click change pose, and there I am thoughtfully contemplating. Now looking at this image full size, it's kind of blurry and a little bit fried. Let's try the change pose with a different starting image. We'll bring in this guy, and let's do the friendly waving gesture. Well, he's waving, but it also changed the color of the image, and he's looking kind of fuzzy. Here's that image full size. His hand is kind of fuzzy. His face is a little fuzzy. It's sort of fried. If we zoom in a bit, you can see this strange texture it has going on. So I'm not really digging that. Let's go out of here, scroll down a bit, and we'll try something fun like villain avatar. We're gonna drag in an image of this sweet little lady here, and for her, let's try the chaos carnival. Click the go button. Oh my goodness, Granny is definitely leading a double life, but this time there's something really wrong with her arms. This arm with the red sleeve sort of disappears, and then this arm that has the blue sleeve, it comes down and bends around, but it's also got another hand sprouting off of it. We'll just give that one another shot. And this one doesn't look much at all like the subject in our starting image. We didn't do so good with the villain. Let's try the superhero. We'll drag in an image of a subject and let's try Superman flying over the city. That looks like our guy is Superman flying over the city. It looks like it fried his hair. If we zoom in a bit, you can see that crosshatch pattern that's going on. Not liking that. Let's move down a bit here to the product shots. We'll do a product lifestyle shot. I'll drop in this image of this fake cologne or perfume or whatever it is. We'll try the hands holding product preset. And just like all the others, you can switch over to custom and describe whatever you want, but we'll stick with the preset. We'll say hands holding product and click the go button. Okay, it put the product in some hands, but it changed the product and put some kind of pump or spray or something on it that just doesn't work. Let's give that one another shot. All right, that's looking a lot better. Just hands holding the product without changing the product or adding things to it. Let's see what it does with in-home environment. Whoa, that's a big thing, a cologne. Now, some of these presets probably wouldn't work so good for a box of cologne like outdoor activity or cafe restaurant, but they might make sense for a different type of product. Let's scoot down a little bit more past the products and all the style changing effects that they have. We've got add background, change and remove background. Change background seems a lot like changing the scene. Then there's a text section, adding and removing objects. Here's one for a messy room. You don't actually have to clean up, just run it through this tool and get an image of what it would look like cleaned. Let's go down to automotive tools and do a change car color. Got a nice bright orange car here. Let's switch it to forest green and hit the go button. It changed the color of our car from orange to green, but it also looks like it's changed some lighting and color in the rest of our image. Here's that image full size of the green car. This little spot here by the headlight 
think that was there in the original image. But back here, whatever's happening to the road here in this curve, that didn't look that way in my original image. Of course, I just noticed that my original image has somebody in the driver's seat with a pointy ear and not much of a face. Hadn't noticed that before. So we just went through a few of the 72 tools. Seems like it was hit or miss. Some of them were more miss than they were hit. I'm not overly impressed with these editing or image changing tools, especially compared to something like Nano Banana that you can use in Gemini. But these are just my results in this short little test. And the image creation tool up here, the new image, that one seemed to do okay for us. Artspace pricing, you have starter lifetime, $69 one-time payment that gets you 300 images a month and access to the tools section, but not the canvas mode. So you would not have the canvas page or the canvas mode to generate images you'd have to do that on that tools page where there's no model selection or any settings really to fool with other than the size pro lifetime is 169 dollars one-time payment that's 1500 images a month you get access to the tools page and the canvas page they also have unlimited that's 269 dollars lifetime unlimited everything and that includes the tools page or section and the canvas mode page or section whatever we're calling it they've also got a relaxed option and that says image generation may be slower depending on server load but it's a bit cheaper starter relaxed is $49 one time pro lifetime if you go relaxed is $99 one time that's the 1500 images a month it does include the whole tools section and the canvas mode and then if you want to do unlimited relaxed that's $169 one time unlimited everything again it's relaxed so it may be slow you get access to all the tools and to the canvas mode and if you want to take a look at all the tools that are on that tools page they're right here on the pricing page right above the pricing that we were just looking at now i'm not a great hype man because i'll tell you art space isn't for everyone if you're getting all the ai image stuff you need from gemini or chat gpt you probably don't need art space if you want an image generation platform that adds the latest models within a few days of their release this probably isn't a good option art space does add new models just not that quickly or if you want a platform that also does ai generated video or keeps your ai generated images organized and accessible later then this probably isn't going to be a good fit for you but if you want simple ai image generation dedicated tools with presets that do specific things with your images and you want to pay once and be done with it and not have a subscription, then ArtSpace is worth taking a look at. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you being here. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and join me for another video.